Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and I'm sure you've never seen an arcade machine which lets you plug in your own PlayStation controllers, or that the PlayStation 1 actually had its own web browser. Well, give me a few minutes and I'll show you these things and more. Arcade machines are great, but the simple fact of the matter is that many of us are far more used to playing with a control pad these days. Crushing finger cramp aside, Capcom know this. That's why Street Fighter V arcade machines have a USB port built into them so you can plug your DualShock 4 pad in. But this is not a new idea, because in the year 2000, Namco released an arcade cabinet called Cyber Lead 2. That's the name of the case, not the game inside. Anyway, this featured something called a slot link system. This is not some sort of digital human centipede arrangement but a feature of the cabinet to allow PlayStation 1 memory cards and control pads to be connected to the arcade machine. If you're wondering what the slots on the other side are, they are Sega Dreamcast VMU slots so Sega owners could do the same. PlayStation players who had World Stadium 3 or World Stadium 4 saves on their memory cards could plug into a CyberLED 2 cabinet but that was running the game World Stadium 2000 and use their characters they'd made at home in the arcade. I even found an old press release and Google Google translated it, just to further preserve this knowledge. Sega owners could do the same thing as this, but with a game called Japanese Pro Wrestling 4. But this doesn't end here, when Namco released Tekken 5 in the arcade, the cabinet to that game featured DualShock 2 ports, so that the players could use PS2 pads in the arcade. Later on, Konami did the same thing with the arcade version of Pro Evolution 2012. In Japan, the series is called Winning Eleven, and the cabinet for the 2012 edition had slots so players could plug in DualShock 2 pads and play that way. PlayStation 1 had online connectivity. Although that sounds ludicrous now, anyone who used to read PlayStation magazines back in 1999 may remember these images that got printed a few times and then totally forgotten about. This is the PlayStation iMode connection lead. iMode being a faster version of WAP, if you even remember what WAP was. Even though there are confidential NDA protected English development documents, it never got released in Europe or America, but in Japan, a handful of games got iMode support. Moto Trump Shi Yu Yo, iMode no Grand Prix. One Piece Mansion, no relation to the manga. Hamster Club I, Ko Mochi, Mobo Tamadachi, and finally iMode Mo Ishio. And this is the one I want to talk about because it's the most mental. First of all, look at the requirements for this game. So first you need a copy of a different game called Doko Demo Ishio. Put that into your PS1 and then plug in your pocket station. Doko Demo Ishio is basically a Tamagotchi game that you can play on your PS1, but then take your character anywhere by using a pocket station. Now we have that out of the way. Now we get our copy of iMode Mo Ishio, put that into our PlayStation, connect our pocket station, which has our Tamagotchi save from Doko Demo Ishio, then plug the iMode lead and connect our mobile phone. And what is our reward? What did iMode Mo Ishio PlayStation Disc do after all of this? DLC costumes! After all of that, this disc allowed us to connect our Tamagotchi online to download in-game items. So what was the point in making this online when those items could have just been put on the fucking disc? What a total waste of time. If this was the extent of the original PlayStation's online capabilities, then this would all be pretty disappointing. Luckily, it's not, because this exists. Yes, this really is a PlayStation 1 online connection disc. This this was used in a very, very limited number of schools in America where it was trialled as an educational tool in partnership with a company called Lightspan and I have a copy of it. This is the PS1 web browsing software and it was made by a firm called Planet Web who actually also made the Sega Saturn web browsing software in America. In fact, the PlayStation browser is just a retooled version of the Sega Saturn one. I can't show you everything here as I have no way of getting my PlayStation 1 online, but I can show you the browser flicking through the HTML pages that are stored on the disc. 
This includes this rather fetching PS1 controller and a nice guide on what each button does. It looks possible that Sony planned to make a push for the PS1 to go online as they prototyped this keyboard and mouse adapter, which even has a Sony serial number. But let's be honest, it wouldn't have been very good. If you had one of the earlier models of the fat PS2, then you may have wondered what this little port was. If you owned a later fat PS2, you wouldn't have wondered because you wouldn't have had the port. And you definitely wouldn't have wondered about the port you didn't have if you had one of the cheap gypsy slim PS2s. Anyway, this port was for something called an S400 iLink cable. And this was used to link PlayStation 2 consoles together. Remember, this was before the Ethernet adapter was released. So this was the way Sony designed the console to link up with another. So, with just two TVs, two PlayStation 2s, and two copies of the same game, you had yourself a system link up. Then, you could go play Time Splitters 2, Gran Turismo 3, Armored Core 2, and Time Crisis 2, as well as a few other titles. Needless to say, it wasn't widely embraced, apart from in one PlayStation community, that being the Gran Turismo fandom. Gran Turismo went further than just allowing you to link two consoles together. If you use an iLink hub, you could have up to six players link consoles. But wait, there's more! But staying true to the ostentatious style of Gran Turismo, you could use the iLink to enable three PlayStation 2s with three screens to link up to form a multi-screen single player setup. This is a feature that has continued on through the Gran Turismo series up until Gran Turismo Sports. Everyone loves a fighting game, and everyone loves toys. So in 1996, Bandai rolled both of these things into one and created Zed Legend of Plasmalite for PlayStation 1, but only in Japan. This is a box set filled with toy robot parts and a device that connects the robots to your PlayStation 1. Then the robot you have built is put into the fighting game that comes in the box as well. If that doesn't make any sense, then maybe the Japanese TV advert will clear things up. <laughs> So as I don't have this game, I tried to get it running on an emulator, but because the device isn't detected by the game, it refuses to get much further than the title screen. So I've had to resort to pulling footage from YouTube. This does look cool, and you don't just have to build the predefined robots, you can mix the parts up and make your own creation to battle with. After researching this game for the video, I thought about finding one on eBay, then I saw the prices. <laughs> know what this is, it's the Windows Recycle Bin. If you delete a file from your computer, it goes in here for a few days before it's deleted forever. The PlayStation 1 had a feature that let you restore deleted memory card files. So here you can see I've got a memory card in slot 1 of my PlayStation and I've got some saved games on there. Now if I select my Spongebob save and go to delete it, you can see it being removed from the list. Now, if I press L1, R1, L2 and R2 at the same time, three times in a row, the save game list refreshes and my Spongebob save is back on the list. Well, anyway, that'll do for this video. Bye-bye.